What's up guys, Alec on Carry here. And today's video is gonna be the second installment in my new Form Check Friday series. Last week we did an in-depth analysis of Athlean X's deadlift technique, which I ultimately gave a rating of just two out of five stars. Jeff's got a lot to work on there, but I'm sure that the next time we see a video of him pulling big weights, his form will be much improved from what it used to be. Anyway, moving on though, today we're going to be analyzing the squat technique of popular YouTuber and elite level powerlifter, Johnny Candido. Candido's been on the social media scene for several years now, and he's been a strong dude for a while. I know he squatted 500 pounds for the first time like six or seven years ago, and I think he hit 550 a couple years after that, and then he kind of got bit by the injury bug for a little while there, which derailed his progress for a good while, which sucks, but it happens to the best of us. But in a mark of true toughness and true resilience, He's come back from those injuries, and in the last couple of years now, he's gotten stronger than ever. So I thought it would be cool to take a look at some of his squat training footage from the last couple of years through part of his rebuild and up to his most recent training PRs and give a breakdown of his technique on the lift. So let's get to it. Now, since Johnny is a power lifter, we will be primarily examining his low bar competition style squat. He takes a compact stance under the bar as he prepares to unrack it, toes are pointed straight ahead, and the torso is held up right, allowing the legs to bear the brunt of the stress of removing the bar from the rack without overtaxing the lower back. He also takes in a nice big breath of air to initiate the Valsalva and help brace his core immediately prior to unracking the bar. He holds this breath of air until he is in the set position and ready to execute the squat. At this point, he lets the air go, grabs another big breath, rebraces, and initiates the descent of the squat. The walkout is efficient and compact. After receiving the weight, he takes one step back, first with the right leg, then one more slightly larger step back with the left leg to ensure sufficient clearance from the rack. And finally, he uses one more mini step with the right leg just to get his feet lined up with each other and get his stance width set correctly. After that, he adjusts his toes out slightly on both feet and prepares to start the squat. The important thing to note here is that there's almost no unnecessary movement and very little precious energy is wasted getting things set up correctly. This is something that I need to take note of myself as I have a very bad habit of fidgeting incessantly after I've walked out the bar and gotten my feet set up for the squat. The more that I'm thinking while I lift, the more unnecessary movement I tend to employ. Whereas if I can shift my brain into autopilot, then I tend to commit to my actions better and waste less energy getting things set up, which allows me to lift more like Johnny is here. Johnny's competition style squat is a pretty textbook low bar style squatting movement. He doesn't actually place the bar super low on his traps compared to what some powerlifters do, but the way the movement itself is executed is pretty much the prototype for this style of squat in modern powerlifting, minus the exaggerated wide stance and hyper focus on pushing the hips back during the squat that are both basically just relics of the multiply era of powerlifting. Johnny takes a stance that is just a little bit outside of shoulder width with his toes pointed out only a few degrees. As far as the low bar style goes, his bar positioning is what I would consider moderate, his stance is what I would consider moderate, and his degree of external rotation is what I would consider mild. 
For an example of what I would consider the opposite end of the spectrum for the low bar style specifically, you can check out Sean Noriega, who's another raw powerlifter. Sean utilizes a pretty extreme low bar positioning along with an extreme stance width. His setup is not really my cup of tea personally, but it's within the confines of the rules of powerlifting and it seems to work well for him. For many people, however, I do believe that such an extreme stance width is going to potentially lead to some hip issues down the road. Lastly, in his set position, Johnny leaves his torso piped forward slightly with his hips flexed slightly backwards behind him and his pelvis situated in an anteriorly rotated position. This position allows him to maintain optimal system balance by accommodating the low bar positioning on his shoulders. As well, the pelvic angle sets his hips into a better starting position to initiate the eccentric phase of the squat. In the set position, the elbows are situated just behind the barbell and they remain in a line constant with the torso angle for the duration of the lift, allowing for maximal engagement of the lats as well as the muscles of the upper back. Just prior to initiating the descent, he takes a big breath of air into his belly to allow for the creation of maximal intra-abdominal pressure. Here, we can see his belt protrude with the introduction of the air, while his shoulders do not rise at all, indicating that the proper breathing pattern for optimal bracing, breathing into the belly, has taken place. As a whole, all of the aforementioned attributes are big positives and overall his setup is both efficient and solid and doesn't try to force extreme positions through either an exaggerated stance or an exaggerated bar positioning which is also probably ideal as far as training longevity is concerned. Johnny initiates the descent by breaking simultaneously at the hips and the knees. In my opinion, this is an ideal way to begin the lowering portion of the squat as it allows you to maintain optimal balance over the midfoot while also encouraging an even distribution of the stress across the muscles of both the hips and the knees. As Johnny continues his descent, he maintains this position of optimal balance with little trouble. His knees shift forward to a moderate degree while his hips shift backwards to compensate, also to a moderate degree, with the barbell remaining directly over the middle of the foot the entire time, leaving the system in perfect balance for the duration of the lift and ensuring an even distribution of the load across the applicable joints and muscles. The pace of the eccentric is smooth and fully controlled. The angle that he positions his pelvis in just as he initiates the descent allows his hips to move through a very efficient and essentially pre-plotted trajectory from their starting position at the top to their finished position at the bottom of the squat with no additional unnecessary movements or otherwise suboptimal deviations one way or the other. We can pinpoint exactly where his hips will end up at the bottom of the squat simply by observing how they are positioned at the top and we can accurately plot every point along the way as they predictably and reliably follow this efficient preset course as dictated by the angle of the pelvis at the top of the lift. Lastly, there's a mild to moderate amount of torso lean in the bottom position of the squat that is commensurate with the positioning of the bar on his shoulders. His depth is generally perfect for passing with white lights in powerlifting competition per the manner in which it's stated in the rule books, which is with the top of the thighs at the hip joints reaching a point that is just below the tops of the knees. However, he occasionally appears to cut some of his reps just a tad high as evidenced by these recent training squats. However, I do not believe that reaching depth in competition has generally been an issue for him and his most recent training PR of 595 pounds from this past January looks like it was sunk pretty convincingly deep, though it is difficult to say for sure due to the camera angle. Overall, the execution of the eccentric phase is fantastic. The barbell moves in a nearly perfect straight line down and his movements are smooth, crisp, 
and efficient with no wasted energy. This allows the lifter barbell system to remain in perfect balance and it sets the stage for a strong and powerful concentric phase. As he enters the turnaround phase, Johnny is not overly reliant on the stretch reflex to initiate the concentric. As noted previously, his eccentric is smooth and controlled, and he continues with this controlled pace during the turnaround phase and through to the concentric phase as well. He appears to be pretty much bottoming out his depth most of the time given the constraints of his chosen stance width and bar positioning, which does allow him to grab a small bounce off of his hips as he initiates the concentric phase, but it's nothing crazy. It's all very methodical. This next part though is going to be a bit nitpicky because the dude makes his one rep max attempts look prettier than I can make 80% of my one rep max look, but he does experience a minor amount of forward barbell drifting when he comes out of the hole to squat on some, just some of his training sets, especially as fatigue sets in when he's doing multiple reps in a set. His form on heavy singles is pretty goddamn impeccable, but there is minor breakdown during reps. As he rises out of the hole, he typically does a very good job of being sure to drive the shoulders and traps back into the barbell. As noted, there is a slight hiccup here sometimes where he allows the bar to drift forward ever so slightly just as he drives out of the hole. But even then, he recovers from that minor error very well and very quickly, driving his shoulders into the barbell behind him and forcing it to take the path he wants. As he continues to rise, his hips and knees extend at an even and constant rate, ensuring that the hips, shoulders, and barbell all rise together as they should and ensuring that the stress from the weight remains evenly distributed across the prime movers in both the hips and the knees throughout the duration of the lift. The barbell typically moves in a straight line down during the eccentric followed by a straight line up during the concentric. Minor deviations notwithstanding, his bar path is typically very very good very, very efficient, and generally pretty damn consistent as well. Most of the time, he moves through the entire range of motion of the lift smoothly and powerfully with almost no discernible sticking point. In fact, the only time his weak point becomes evident at all is at absolute maximal weights, where we can see that he is at a slight risk of getting pitched forward shortly after driving out of the hole. This maximal attempt is also the only time that we see any sort of compensation at all with a minor amount of hip shifting as well as that tiny little twerk that we can see in his right knee there. Overall, however, the concentric is very smooth, very strong, and very proficient. Johnny appears to be very well rounded with no readily apparent relative weaknesses in his lower body. Now, I know he does a lot of assistance work for the quadriceps specifically using different machine squatting variations and belt squatting variations and whatnot, but I would be curious to see what would happen if he started treating the front squat, which is one of my favorite, actually it is my favorite squatting variation, as a serious assistance exercise for his competition style squat. Primarily because I'm wondering if the massive impact that they have on upper back strength specifically would potentially push his squat to the next level. In conclusion, Johnny Candido has a majestic fucking squat. It's pretty damn textbook, it's efficient as hell, it's smooth as hell, it's very well controlled throughout the movement, the sticking point is pretty much non-existent, there are no glaring weaknesses present and area compensation to be found except at absolute maximal weights. The hard work, the effort, and even the thought that he has put into this movement over the years are all readily evident simply by watching him perform it. It truly is a work of art and it should be commended as such. Overall, I give Johnny Candido's competition style squat technique four and a half out of five stars. 
It's about as good as it gets, guys. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. Also, if you're interested in online coaching, be sure to shoot me an email at onkiri.elite at gmail.com and I'd be happy to pass some more information your way. Or simply visit my website, www.onkiri.elitefitness.com for more details. Keep training hard, and I'll catch you guys next time.